In our last episode, we showed y'all how to clean and dye your traps so they last for years to come. On this episode, we're going to show you all how to modify your traps. I've got a brand new Duke number three here, straight out of the box, and I'm going to show you all what I do to my traps so that they're ready to function at their highest probability of catching the cow once he steps on your pan. First thing we'll probably walk through is leveling pans out. You want that pan to be level or below the jaws when it's set. And then we'll go through setting your pan tension, what I like on pan tension. After we get those two things, what your, I recommend those as soon as you get them out of the box before you use them, that's the two things you need to do. If you don't do anything else, those are have to's basically. After those, there's a few other modifications you can do. If you want to get into it, we're going to cover some of those as well. So, let's start modifying this one. Okay, I just set this trap. As you can see, how that pan is angled up. That's terrible. You're never going to catch coyotes with your pan sitting like that. What we're going to want to do is level this pan out to where it's level with these jaws or a little bit below them. To do that, this is called a Fox Hollows Trap Adjuster. It slides over this back here where the dog engages. I'm going to slide that over there and I'm going to bend this. I'm going to be pulling this away towards my pan. Okay. I'm going to fire this one. Set her down dog out of the way. I'm going to slide that right over there. Now I'm just going to pull towards me. Reset this one. I went a little bit too far because it won't even set. Bend it back a little. To bend it back you just push instead of pull now. And that there is much better. Let me get some of that out. As you can see, we're not sticking up in the air anymore. We're about level with our jaws. Okay, once you straighten out your pan, you get it level below the jaws. Next thing you want is for that trap to fire around two to three pounds of tension is what I prefer. Okay, so we've got it set. This is called a Sullivan's Trap Tester. Each one of these rings on here is graduated to be one pound increments. That's one pound as you push down two, three, four, and on past that. So we want this trap to fire. I'm gonna place it in the center of the pan. I want this trap to fire when it gets down to the two or the three. One, two, three, and we're going way past. That one's around four pounds of tension. So to lighten that up, the way these come is just with a bolt nut assembly. We're just going to loosen this up on the pan a little bit to get it down there to where it's between two and three pounds. I just use a screwdriver and a pair of slip joint pliers. Hold it back there. Just loosen it up just a little bit. Okay, so we loosen it up just a little. We'll try it again. Okay, you'll have some false area there. See how it's sticking up, but that's going to be dead area. Right there is where my pan tension starts kicking in. And I've still got nearly a full dog in this trap. You can see right there. I've got a lot of... That coyote, he doesn't mind that pan falling a little bit. You don't want it... I don't like mine anyway to where as soon as that pan moves, it fires. When you're using a system like this. I want that pan to fall with him putting tension on it. So... We loosened it a little bit. We're going to check it again. One, two, oh, about two and a half. That's good. Okay. 
Okay, so you can take those two adjustments right there and start catching coyotes. That's the bare minimum. That's what I recommend. If you can get your pan leveled, get the tension right, then you can go out there and start setting these traps and you'll be in good shape. Okay, so the next modification we're going to show you all is one that I truly love to do to my traps. This is called a pause trip pan system. What it does is we're going to replace, we're going to take this pan off and this dog off. Why? For the most part, and all traps are designed this way basically that have a dog, this pan here, it pivots right here. That's where the pan pivots from. Coyote steps on the pan, it falls from where this pivot point is to catch the coyote. Okay, the only problem with that is part of this pan is dead area because of how close it is to where the pan pivots. Okay, we're going to replace that with this pause of trip. And I hope you can see this good. The pause of trip is going to pivot from this back here. We're going to move the pivot point from here to back here right in front of the jaw which means that this whole area of this pan is going to be kill area, which over time is going to add lots of percentages of catches to your totals. So we'll get started with that. Throw this one. Just like we adjusted the pan a while ago, that's how we're going to take it off. Just use your slip joint pliers. Hold the nut in the back. Well, mine are falling apart. I'm just going to take this pan off. Alright, we got that pan off. Pretty simple. And then install the pause of trip pan. Now when you order these, they come, there's a specific number for what size trap you have. This is a PIT-09, I believe, for this Duke number 3. That's the size I like putting on them. Okay. You see these little notches in the back of this pan? They just slide right there where the springs attach behind that. All right, we slide that on there. Then I just take a pair of vice grips and you just crimp them on. One side, come over here to the other side, cramp it on. I don't like for the pan to have a lot of side movement as far as rocking like that. To be able to flow freely back and forth is fine, just not to be able to tilt this away. When you're tightening them, you don't want to tighten them all the way down just to where they slide freely along that back hook. Okay, so we got the pan on. Like I say, all it took was a pair of vice grips. I just crimped these like so. Now what we're going to do is take the old dog off. This is the dog right here. We're just going to remove it. And all that I ever do is I just slide a screwdriver. If I can get it where you all can see. I just slide the screwdriver in the back right there. Then I just kind of start twisting until it comes off, basically. There's not a right or wrong way to do it. Some of them are tighter than others. Okay. I just bent that open until I could slide it out of that little notch in the back. The new dog goes on the exact same way as the old one. And you'll notice that it has a little bubble here on the end of it. And when the pan pushes against the front of this bubble, that's all that holds that trap from firing. It's not set, the tension's not by a nut and a bolt system. It works simply off the pressure of your springs, pushing against the dog. Okay, so we're gonna slide that on. And I just use a pair of channel locks to close that up. So we got that closed. Now I'm gonna set this trap and we'll see what it looks like. Okay, I just set this trap and we installed this system. And that pan, it looks pretty good, but it's a little bit low. It's kind of hard to get set. So we're going to use the trap adjuster like we did a while ago. I'm simply going to bend that back some. To actually raise that pan just a little bit. Just going to go a little bit. And that will set it. And you'll actually hear this click 
when you're setting it. So you can set that pan up like that and it's not going to go off. Now you just slowly bring it down to where it falls over that bump on the dog. Thought you might be here. That raised it just a little bit. It was a lot easier to set that time. Now just like we did on the old style dog and pan, do the same thing. We're going to test the pan tension on it. Middle of the pan. One, two, three, four. Alright. Somewhere between four and five pounds it looked like to me. So we need to loosen that pan tension a little. Now these are a little bit different. There's no nut and bolt for you to adjust it with. So what you gotta do, is you're gonna hold this dog with one pair of pliers. Get my hands where you can see. I don't know if you can anyway. That's basically what I'm doing. I'm holding it back here with this plier and I'm actually gonna bend it down a little bit. You can see how the dog is straight right now. By bending this dog down, it relieves the pressure on it and actually lowers the pan tension for you. Okay. We may have to readjust the height of the pan after we do that. Alright, okay. see the pan come up much higher now. Let's go ahead and adjust it now. Gonna pull that back towards us. I pulled it back a lot. There's pretty level. And you can see the little bend of the dog there. Let's see if it changed any. Want to go over between four and five pounds? Like I said, my preference personally is between two and three. Alright, one, two, alright, right there around three pounds. Where it fired. So that's what we want. That's a real good system right there. Um, like I say, this whole area of this pan now, by moving that fulcrum or the pivot point back, becomes kill area. It's going to add some catches to you, which means a lot to me. Also, um, these systems, as they sit out in rain, some soil types are really acidic, they'll start to rust in between where that post is, where it pivots. And as it rusts, your pan tension will change some while it's sitting in the ground. This system doesn't do that because the whole pan tension is based on this jaw pushing up on your pan. So it's a real reliable, trustworthy system. I never worry about it once it's in the ground. Okay, the next modification I'm going to do to this trap is this chain, over time, is going to start getting weak. It's a small chain. What I'm going to do is just use the S-hook tool. We're going to take this, open up this J-hook. We're going to remove this old chain and these smaller uh, swivels. We're going to put new chain and new swivels on. So I'm going to slide this S-hook tool. So you can see how this, when you open it, those two will come together. I'm going to slide it in the J hook. We're just going to squeeze, and that's going to open that J hook up. Okay. So, it open. I'm going to take the old chain off. I'm going to slide this J hook out. And I haven't had a problem over a lot of coyotes caught just going right back in this same and keeping the chain on the side. I never try to center swivel these Duke number threes, and I, like I say, I haven't had any reason to think that I've lost coyotes because of it. Alright, go back. We're going to replace these swivels with what's called MB crunch proof swivels. They're a real heavy duty swivel. The J hooks are real heavy. So we put this chain on and it'll last as long as the trap will. Placing the J hook there. Just going right back in where the old J hook was. And I pre-cut my, this is number three straight length chain. I'm going to put and you can put whatever chain variation that you want. If you want 
three lengths, however you like it, that's all user preference. The main thing is to have swivels. Hook that chain on the J hook. I'm going to close it up. I can open the J hook. Or my S hook tool, rather. Put it on there. I'll close that up. First link closed. Got our next link. Take our crunch proof swivel, J hook in each end. Put that in there. Same deal, close the J hook through that chain. I like the line to be closed up all the way. I'm going to add my last, this is five chain links that I pre-cut. We'll close this one up. Mm. If I don't drop it. Okay, now we got that closed. And you can add as many swivels, whatever. You can add what's called a shot spring in there. I've used about every system there is. I'm just going to add one more swivel at the bottom. Swivels are important because as that coyote's caught, he's going to be spinning and jumping, and you want that trap to be able to spin freely with the caught coyote. If it can't, it gets that coyote in a bind. It's just more. You'll have more catches due to putting proper swiveling in your traps. It'll hold better the coyotes, and it also keeps them more comfortable while they're in the trap as well. It's more humane. So that's the main modifications I do to these new traps when I get them out of the box. Uh, like I say, if you're going to use the original pan and dog, that's fine. I've caught lots of coyotes doing it. Just make sure you level the pan off, that you get your pan tension somewhere. I like two to three pounds. If you want to do a few extra modifications, then the pause trip pan system is one that I really love and just adding a heavier duty chain with some extra swivels in it. But that's the main modifications I do to them. Um, pretty simple stuff, all simple tools. Only specialty tools I use was this Sullivan's trap tester. If you don't have one of these, what you could do, I'll show you. If you've got a scale at home, like a postmaster scale, you can sit this on top of your scale, take the reading, you can put it on zero, and then start pushing down and see when it fires. And your scale will tell you when that trap fired off. But that's some simple tools. This one is special, the S-hook tool, you can order them, and the Fox Hollows Trap Adjuster. That's a real nice tool to have. It makes it a lot easier if you don't have it. I have taken my screwdriver and stuck it in that notch to bend that up and down. I've clamped this in a, um, in a vise and just bent my trap to bend this up and down. I mean, there's a lot of ways you can do it, but having one of these will really speed that system up a lot. It's just too easy to go a little bit, a little bit, and get that adjusted out the way you want it. So, pan level, two to three pounds of tension is what I like. Anything else is extra, of course, but it will continue to add catches to you. That's my trap mod. Uh -huh.